thankful for the messages so far that have fed our spirits, and I'm as well thankful for the food that has been prepared by our sisters for our physical body. So um, for my testimony this afternoon, I'd like to share with you some of the things that God has taught me and done in the past two years that I have been in Christ. I have marked some high points or pinnacles with a scripture that I see fit with a certain circumstance or a certain thing that the Lord was teaching me. So I will start with this, Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I was baptized into Christ on May 17, 2015, and I learned that death with Christ must come before living with him. Paul said that I die daily, and likewise our old self is crucified daily, so that we may not fulfill the lusts of the flesh, but walk in the spirit. Brother Jason said this morning that we should not be satisfied with anything less than new life. And this is very important. Um, he likened this to the new creature, a butterfly. And so we should not be content with being a caterpillar. We should um, want to gain new heights as a butterfly does. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The Lord is our portion, but we must empty our vessels of ourselves before he can fill us. John said that he must increase, Jesus must increase, and I must decrease. We are walking upward, and um, Jesus will send trials our way to shape us, and so we, not be, we should not be surprised when this happens. Which is, this leads me to the next scripture, 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, and as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. See, trials are the means by which God shapes us into vessels fit for his kingdom. I thought of when God led Jeremiah to the potter's house, and this is how Jeremiah describes it. Behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Just as Israel is in the hand of the Lord, so are we, and he's shaping us into this vessel. Often through trials, we have something brought out of us that we may not have recognized and something that is taken off of us like dross and precious gold in a fire. Now I say this for those who are maybe newly in Christ. You will, you will be put through trial if you haven't already. But this is not mean just for the means of discouraging you. It is so that when glory shall be revealed, you may be also with exceeding joy. You may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. This scripture shows that right now we see Christ through a glass darkly, but when we see him as he is, since he is guiding us through this life, we will also be made um, in glory like him. Um, I would like to share with you a couple experiences from these past two years. As many of you know, I was in the public school system, and um, I'd like to share with you some things that the Lord did in that. Um, I feel that it is important to share what God does. Um, in the scripture, Colossians 2, 6 through 8, As you therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any men spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, yeah. after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One of the classes that I was placed in shortly after my baptism was biology. 
And as you know, evolution is a popular vein to see in philosophy taught in the school system. How it is taught does depend on the teacher you are given, but mine was a stout evolutionist who thought it to be truth. Um, instead of lecturing upon it, the teacher handed out packets that we were supposed to fill out and read on our own. But I took this as a test from the Lord and not from a test, not a test from my teacher. So instead of filling it out with the textbook and readings of the packet in mind, I filled it out with the truth in mind. Amen. The day we were supposed to turn it in, I had been sick, and I started feeling well after I knew that biology was over, so I took that from the Lord. Um, the next day I returned, and the teacher asked me to hand in the packets, and when I did, he placed it right on top of the stack of the other students, so I knew that he would probably be reading my mine first. Um, I as well had to take a test over this topic, but it was, it was mixed with another facet of biology that is um, factual to everyone. So there was only one question that I really would have felt convicted answering the way that I knew he wanted me to answer it, so I just left it blank. When we got the packets back, I was a little shocked. <laughs> he had given me 100% on the worksheets. and. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was actually expecting a zero. Um, and then he announced that the test we had taken, he was going to take off the question that I didn't feel comfortable answering. And he said that if someone had missed it, then it would not count against their grade. Amen. I take this from the Lord, and I'm very thankful for um, this. Um, in a speech class, I also found out that the teacher was a believer, and there were some girls who were believers also, and so we were given the opportunity to talk and write speeches about the Lord in class. Yes, these were blessings given by God, but I came to find out and see that it would be more beneficial for, for me to be homeschooled. God showed me in other classes that the teachings were very corrupt because he had been taken mostly out of them. They emphasized the wrong thing, and the classes in which I was placed in required many hours outside of the school day. When I saw that I could have a God-centered education, I prayed to God that he would give me the opportunity to homeschool. My mom and I did research and figured out that it was something that I could do. Thanks to God, I am now homeschooled, as well as my three younger siblings, Enoch, Canaan, and Allie. Um, I commend any of you who are still having me in the public school system. Um, you are there for a reason, and I encourage you to speak up about the Lord and any opportunity that you are given, and you will not be put to shame. The next verse that I would like to mention is Matthew 10, 34 through 35, and it's Jesus' words. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to send a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. I would like to share what the Lord has shown me about this text. Um, this is talking about our earthly family. Um, Jesus came primarily for us to have peace with God, like we have talked about today. And if he wills, if God wills for our families to have peace with us, then it will happen. But that's not always so, and we shouldn't be surprised if that happens. If Jesus sends the sword, then it is righteous for him to do so. And we must submit to this. Jesus also said, though, Everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, meaning earthly, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Um, I know that there are many people out there who have forsaken houses, and father, and mother, for Jesus' name's sake. And I think we have received some first fruits now, being partakers together right here, receiving each other as brethren. Lastly, all things, all things work together for good to them that love God. And when I say good, it's not like a 
fuzzy lollipops and rainbow type thing like what the world may put it as but good as in righteous and holy in closing when one is alive to God they become more and more sensitive to what he is doing around them see a believer is perceptive of heavenly purpose and earthly circumstances I trust that all of you in Christ are aware of this divine nature for in Christ we are partakers of his divinity